Welcome to Sweetheart Survivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What's on our table today? Castles of Burgundy. Castles of Burgundy. Yeah. It's the two to four player game that mm -hmm. takes about 30 to 90 minutes. Good for ages 12 and up. The copy we have is by Aaliyah and Ravensburger. Yep. This is one of our Stefan Feld games. We have many. That we do. Yep. And there'll be a link somewhere on here if you want to watch the uh, overview and or the playthrough. playthrough that we just finished. Yeah, we just finished it. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So um, the components of Castles of Burgundy, what do you think? I think the p components are pretty good. The board is very sturdy. Yep. These little cardboard things are a little thinner than board games now. I'm not sure this is an older game. Yeah. If we have a newer publication or if it's always been. But there is a lot of them. There is a lot of that them. Might be so, yeah. Yeah. It would be a lot to store, too. Yeah. Um, but I think the components are good quality. Yeah. Good to high quality. Yeah. Yep. Um, some people might think the artwork's kind of bland, but I don't. I kind of like it. It kind of goes with the theme of the game. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think of the strategy of Castles? Uh, Castles of Burgundy has a really excellent blend of all three, strategy, tactics, and randomness. Um, you don't know what tiles are going to come out on the board each round. Uh, you're not quite sure what goods are going to be where, and of course you're rolling dice that determine what you can do. But even with all that randomness, there's so many different choices of what you can do with your dice and with the worker's way to mitigate that luck yeah. that it doesn't feel heavy in randomness. No, not really. Not at all. You feel like you can manage it pretty well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and then uh, tactics, what can you do with the dice every round? And then the strategy of trying to go for, like, for example, this last uh, game, I went for farms and fields which I don't usually do and I tried to build towards that as soon as possible because if you can build towards filling up certain areas sooner you get a bunch of bonus points right and see you also bought those two technologies quite soon in the game as well yeah. Yeah. that were really geared towards extra points for farms at the end yeah I think those two together especially with getting the goats I think yeah. that really helped me that in. one in the game yeah. yeah yeah so spoiler sorry a really excellent blend of all three they they mesh together really well and there's a lot of turns um, but it doesn't feel like there's too many that it's, it doesn't feel too long No, your turn goes by so fast yeah roll and the dice and just sometimes your dice are really obvious what you want to do yeah and other times you'll see like we have to talk it out a little bit yep but other than that like it's a really quick game it's yeah. really quick and clean and everybody rolls their dice at the same time so even though turns are super quick, they're, even with that little bit of downtime, you're figuring out what you want to do. So mm -hmm. the downtime on this game is like nil, which yeah. is awesome. Which is good, yeah. Yep. The only, the first player is a little pressured because they're the ones yeah. deciding first. But sure. yeah. Yep. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Our cat has decided to wake up and let us know that she is awake and hungry. Right. So we're almost done, Jinx. Just yep. hold on. <laughs> All right, so uh, what about the complexity of Castles of Burgundy? I don't find it overly complex because, I mean, there's a lot of choices and a lot of parts and mm. a lot of things you can do, but because you're only focused on what your two dice roll yeah, and you have those two choices and maybe with those two choices there might be four or six different things you can do, yeah. depending on the strategy you've chosen, it really like cuts down the time you have to make the decisions. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I really want to do this. Can I do it with the dice I want to do? Yes, I can. Bam, bam. Done. Your turn. Yeah. So it's not overly complex, even though there's a lot of, bless you, <laughs> a lot of moving pieces and stuff. Yeah. And, and it's easy to set up. And the rule book was pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. Rule book's really straightforward, easy to follow. And, and just like you said with those dice, like if it was some kind of, you have so many points or so much money to buy, then you would have so many choices. It would be too many choices. Yeah, it'd it, bog you down. That would be overly complex. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, those dice. You roll the dice, it's like, I can, I can do two things. And that really narrows the choices down. So yeah. yeah. And we've taught it before too, and it's not really hard to teach to people either. No. 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 Out of all the, the Stefan Feld games we have, this is the one that gets played the most with more than two players mm -hmm. yeah because yeah, it is say. easy to teach yeah. and play it's quick yeah yeah so what do you think about the playability of the game uh the mechanics and the theme 
um, are interesting. There is, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't feel like there's a disconnect. Um, I feel like, yes, I'm trying to, um, you know, make a bigger province and just like if I were really a prince of Burgundy trying to, there would be certain opportunities mm -hmm. and depending on, you know, fate or fortune or whatever, some of them would be better than others. So I actually don't feel like there's a disconnect. It makes sense that you start off with a castle and from there you have to build outward. Yeah. And you're developing from a place that you've already developed from. Um, I love that there's a black market. That makes sense. You can spend a little bit of silver and get yourself some... Yeah, some... and each little village you're making has all the different kinds of buildings in it. So you can think about like what sort of village you're concocting. Yeah. Everything coming together. Yeah, it is. And nice. And bizarrely, it doesn't have any combat. And I say that only because of the next sentence I'm going to say. For some reason, it reminds me of that game I used to play Heroes of Might and Magic, where you start out with your little village, yeah. and then you're just spreading across, you That's know, true. and you're discovering all these little things, and yep. you're, I don't know what, anyway. Yeah, and it's really nice at the end of the game to kind of look down and say, what did I make out of this? Yep. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Yep. Um, it scales really well. Um, the only thing that kind of takes a little bit of time, and there's that downtime, is... At the end of every round, you got to take a bunch of tiles off and then refill. Mm -hmm. And the more players there are, the more spaces there are that you have to refill. So that takes a little bit of time. But, I mean, not a ton. And it's downtime for everyone except the person refilling. Yeah, and you're usually talking about what you did last or, yeah, you know, trying to look at your board and think, oh, I hope this really comes out or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but actual gameplay, because it's so quick... And you roll your dice before it's your turn, so you can kind of start thinking of what you want. Like the downtime is nil. Um, the, the 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 player rounds are super quick, so 25 rounds and it plays really quickly. Yeah. And the replayability, even if these were the only boards you had, um, these player boards, the replayability, the game's going to be different. You can try different strategies. The the knowledge tiles come out differently. differently so there's yeah. there's all that replayability, but then. You get all these extra player boards. Yeah. Well, some of them we bought extra, yeah. which you can find them, I think, still pretty easily. So, oh, yeah. I mean, it's easy to... And they're double-sided. Expand your game. And you can get some really interesting kind of... Setups. Uh, setup layouts where stuff just... Like, when you're, if you're used to this board, everything kind of spreads out evenly from your center castle. Mm -hmm. There's some crazy setup player boards there. Yeah, we just got that new... Um, expansion there with, where you had to make the lines oh, yeah. and you get extra points yeah so, yeah and then we got this player board here and there's a couple of them and they actually have these uh churches or monasteries in these corners and if you can make a line connecting uh one to the other it's even though you're cutting through drastically different sections of your 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 province um, it counts as if you've completed an area so you get these bonus points and these points for that as well yeah so again like that brings another layer of yeah playability, replayability, yeah. absolutely so this is a game that I could play over and over again and I don't think I've ever been bored of it see I like it because it's such a puzzly game and I get so involved in my next wondering what's gonna come out and can I get what I need with the dice that I rolled yeah and it goes by so fast yeah and just the puzzle of it yeah. like it's Absolutely. And very replayable. Very interesting thing is getting to learn the knowledge tiles mm -hmm. can help with that strategy and that replayability. So um, when we were playing the playthrough, I had one space left on my player board that I needed to fill with any kind of animal to get uh, a bunch of these bonus points, a bunch of bonus points for filling an area, plus that bonus five points for filling all mm -hmm. my fields at once. And I didn't do it that round because I thought if I wait till next round and the black market fills, I know there's that goat tile. The chances of it coming out are slim, but if it comes out next round, that I'm gonna could give win me, by yeah. ten points. And so it came out that round. So yeah, I the, should have blocked him on that. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it, as replayable as it is, and as fresh and new it is each round, you can get used to some of the tiles and knowledges and really kind of start forming specific strategies seeing what comes out mm -hmm. so yeah. it's 
I don't know, there, there's like an arc where it's great and fresh and new, but as you get used to it, it doesn't get old. It just takes on new flavors. Right. Which is weird, a whole bunch of kind of cooking terms, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, does Castles of Burgundy have the awesomeness or the cuteness? This game is way more awesome than cute. Yes. Yeah, the only thing cute, some of the art is cute with the little field to, to, uh Field tiles? Field chits, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But other than that, it's way more awesome than cute. Yeah. That being said, as much as I love cuteness, it doesn't deter the, the, my opinion of the game at all. No. And all the buildings and tiles you place down have s like specific effects. And it's you can chain them together if you get just that right combo, mm -hmm. which... Like, because normally you got two dice, which means you could like put two buildings out. Right. But if you put this building out, which has a special ability of placing this tile to put anywhere, which is, happens to be a castle, which lets you have free turn, which means you can, like, there's ways to chain together to get like four things out. Right. And that just is awesome. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun when you see that chain start to happen. You're like, my next turn is gonna be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of awesomeness in Castles of Burgundy. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, would you rate Castles of Burgundy as poor, good, excellent, or outstanding? I would have to rate it as an outstanding game. Outstanding. Yeah. Plus one. <laughs> really? Plus one. Yeah. Uh, we, I don't know. We don't, we don't have like a star rating or anything. No, but, we don't. I mean, this is but outstanding I really plus. like it. Because, like I said before, I don't notice the time when it goes by. Mm. And it's a really puzzly game for me. Yep. And it's got just enough of that luck and randomness that make it still exciting to yeah. play. Yep. Yeah. There's no direct confrontation, but you can definitely get in there you and can block, block people. people kind of in that passive-aggressive way. Yep. And Because you can see the dice they have. Yeah. So you can look ahead to what you think they might be doing as well. So it's like, there's only one mine on there. Should I get it now or maybe wait? Oh, no. He's got a five. Now I better get it this turn or he's going to take it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Outstanding game. Yeah. One of the best Steffenfeld games we have. Um, and I honestly wow, can't. Wow. I can't believe you just made that statement because we have a lot of them. I know. One of the best ones one we have. One of the best. I'm not saying it's the best, but one of the best. Mm. Yeah. I can't comment on that right now. <laughs> I just, I would have to play all of them. Yeah. And then see which one. Yeah. Because, yeah, we don't play them in a row. All no. the felts. No. Yeah. It's um, been a while for some of them. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. To get back into them. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, did we finish Castles of Burgundy as Sweethearts or Rivals? I would say we finished as Rivals. sweethearts. Really? Yeah. Why? Why? Because I, I don't know. I can block and stuff like that, and I can be blocked, but it's I don't not, get upset. It's not cutthroat, and I don't get upset, but I still don't make it. I still don't want to make it easy for you to win. No, true. Um, I don't know. I guess when it's your turn and you're choosing your dice, I mean, on the playthrough, I bit my tongue a couple of times. I was like, "Well, if you could have done this." But, I mean, during a regular game, I don't mind saying, well, you know, you could do this and this, and that would make your turn better. It's true. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, for me, it's that I whole individual kind of game. For me, it's a sweetheart game. I still keep my eye on him and see what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. Castles of Burgundy. Castles of Burgundy. Thanks for watching. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Later. Colors on the board. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jinx. Mr. Cat. Are you going to put your tail right? Yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. And awesome. knock stuff over. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just lie right down on those tiles. That's what they're there for—a pillow. <laughs> Are you going to just stay there? And we'll continue. Jinx. We're on artwork. Artwork. Yeah.